we are introduced to Izuku Midoriya, a 14 year old boy who wants to be Superman. It's rough luck for him though since he was not born with what people call a quirk, basically a superpower. Now that would be all fine and dandy if having a quirk was rare, but nah, 80% of people have quirks, my man is screwed. He's going places, just not to the Justice League. Now my boy Izuku is constantly bullied for not having a quirk by his childhood friend Bakugo, who is a living bomb. Well, one day on the way home from school, Izuku is attacked by a villain but is saved by the arrival of All Might, a famous hero known as the symbol of peace. He's that world Superman. Well, before Superman leaves, Izuku asks him whether he can become a hero without a quirk and All Might tells him that it's fine to dream but he should not confuse his dream with his reality. My man basically said, are you crazy? Shut your dumb ass up, go read some textbooks, my boy. While continuing home, Midoriya spots a crowd watching a villain who is using Katsuki's body to blow shit up. Now, not wanting to be a puss boy, he steps in and attempts to save his homie, which shocks the crowd and All Might who is watching. All Might then jumps in and saves them both using his iconic attack. Well, after the fact, Bakugo comes up to Midoriya and tells him to literally never help him again and goes away extremely flippin' angry. Luckily for Midoriya, there's some good news because my guy Superman appears and he says, Thank you for inspiring me with your bravery despite not having a quirk. He then reveals that he wants Midoriya to inherit his quirk, the one for all. The one for all quirk is extremely special due to the fact that it can be passed down and it can be given to people without a quirk. Now my boy Midoriya is absolutely stoked, but he makes sure to ask All Might why he wants to give him the quirk and All Might responds with, it's because he shined more than any of the other so-called heroes. Midoriya accepts to take the quirk from my guy who looks like he's on a deathbed and they start Midoriya's training. All Might explains that if Midoriya was to inherit the one for all as he is now, his body would literally blow into bits. My guy would explode. Because of this, All Might puts him through some pretty good training, such as cleaning all of Seaside Bay's trash heaps to strengthen his body. And bro, this isn't your normal trash heap. This is like a trash trash heap. After 10 long months, it's time for the UA entrance exams, the school Midoriya wants to go to, and Midoriya's training has also just completed. All Might gives Midoriya a piece of his hair, tells him to ingest it some way into his body, and on goes Midoriya to UA. Midoriya gets to UA and is about to fall on the way there, but is saved by a girl's quirk. The girl tells him good luck, and my boy Midoriya is left there speechless because like the virgin he is, he has never talked to a girl before. We then learn how the entrance exams work. There is a practical test, and then there is a written test. In the practical test, the examinees must dispatch as many robot villains as they possibly can. While the practical portion starts and while everybody else is out there fighting robot monsters, my boy Izuku cannot fight anything. My guy got a severe case of the heebie-jeebies, you feel me? Well, after he sees the same girl who helped him earlier trapped under rubble, he musters up some courage and decides to save her. He uses the one for all to literally annihilate the huge robot threatening the girl. Now, obviously, there's going to be a repercussion for using that much power because my boy Izuku's legs and right arm are literally broken. They are gone. They are GG'd. To make things worse, Mans is in the air falling down and he can't even cushion his landing because his legs are broken. Luckily, the girl from earlier saves him by making him float. It is at this moment that it is announced that the practical exam is also over. One week later, Midoriya receives a letter with a video from All Might. All Might reveals that he did okay on the written test but absolutely failed the practical test due to not killing enough robot baddies. Luckily, being a hero isn't just going around fighting things, it's also rescuing people. And due to the fact that he rescued the girl, he got accepted into UA. The girl's name is Uraraka, by the way. Fast forward, now it's spring and the first day of school. Midoriya walks into class just to see that Bakugo is there and that a person wearing glasses named Tenya is also there. The girl who he saved, Uraraka, also made it into UA and is in that same class. A man who looks like he needs coffee then enters the room and says his name is Aizawa and that he is their homeroom teacher. He then tells the students to get changed and head over to the PE grounds. At the training grounds, Aizawa, whose hero name is Eraserhead, explains that they will be having a quirk apprehension test. Aizawa makes it a rule that the person who ranks last in total points will be deemed hopeless and expelled. Well, now the whole class is competing in a series of tests such as the 50 meter dash, grip strength, standing long jump, shit like that. In the last test, Midoriya tries to use the one for all to pitch the ball far, far, but he can't for some reason. Aizawa then reveals his quirk can erase other quirks and that he is the hero, Eraserhead. Aizawa tells Midoriya that his quirk has a major drawback, that nobody will come to help him if he's hurt. 
He says that his quirk won't help him become a hero if his power is the very reason that causes him to get rescued by others. Well, Aizawa decides to let Midoriya try again and this time Midoriya takes what Aizawa said into account. Instead of sacrificing his whole goddamn arm to just throw a baseball, he only uses the tip of his finger. He then goes to Aizawa and says, hey, look buddy, I can still move, which actually impresses Aizawa. Now All Might who is secretly watching is pretty impressed. Now while everybody is happy and cheering for Midoriya, my boy Bakugo is kinda pissed, you know? He thinks Midoriya lied to him all these years about not having a quirk and charges at homeboy. Luckily, Aizawa stops him before he can do anything he'll regret. I'm telling you bro, that's a tsundere right there. After the test, Aizawa presents the results and he says that the expulsion rule was a lie. He just wanted the kids to perform to the best of their ability. Now that's straight BS and All Might walks up to Aizawa and says, hey, yo bro, you lying, and then says that the only reason he didn't expel them is because he sees the potential in them. Aizawa then walks away and All Might comments that they will never get along. Well, the first day of school has ended and my boy Midoriya has become friends with Ochako and Tenya. They actually have class with All Might as their teacher. All Might tells the kids to change into their hero costume and gather at ground B for the trial of battle. During this trial, the students will be divided into teams of villains and heroes. If the heroes manage to capture the villains or reach the nuclear core the villains are protecting before time runs out, they win. If the villains manage to keep the nuclear core away for the whole time or they capture the heroes, they win. Well, the pairs are decided at random and All Might reveals that the first group of heroes will be Midoriya and Uraraka and that the first group of villains will be Bakugo and Tenya. The villains go inside the building first to set up the nuclear bomb and the heroes enter about 5 minutes later. Now this whole time, Bakugo is still seething with anger at the fact that he thinks Midoriya lied to him about not having a quirk. This plays right into his performance when he meets the heroes inside of the building. He's going ham, dropping nukes left and right, my boy is destroying shit. While Midoriya keeps Bakugo busy, Uraraka reaches the room with the nuclear core. Unfortunately, this dumbass giggles when my boy Tenya does his villain performance and he finds out that she's literally there. Well, Bakugo finds Midoriya and literally unleashes a nuclear explosion on Homeboy, which destroys a part of the building. This distracts Tenya and Uraraka makes a run for the core, but Tenya's big brain and he sees this and tries to stop her. He succeeds and drags the core away from her. Meanwhile, All Might is telling Bakugo to stop dropping nukes or else they will lose. Bakugo starts some Wing Chun bullshit and starts fist fighting my boy Midoriya. Now realizing he's about to get his ass beat, Midoriya uses Detroit Smash on the ceiling which drops Uraraka and Tenya onto their floor. Psych Uraraka and a pillar are floating and she's using the debris to distract and attack Tenya. She then runs over to the core while Tenya is distracted and All Might declares that she and Midoriya have won. Well after the other students including Shoto's amazing display are done doing their tests, All Might concludes the class. Back in the nurse's room, All Might is getting scolded by a recovery girl who says that he should not indulge Midoriya and that as his successor for the one for all, he should not be getting injured this much. All Might tells her to shush bro and that his crackhead appearance is not common knowledge, it's a secret and so is his power and injury. Only pro teachers and trusted people know about it. Midoriya then goes back to the classroom and attempts to find Bakugo and tries to tell him the truth about the whole situation, including how he got the one for all. Bakugo says cap and then All Might appears and attempts to give him counsel and self-confidence. Of course, Bakugo does a Bakugo and tells Homeboy to screw off. Meanwhile, a mysterious person is reading a newspaper about All Might becoming a teacher and asks the question, what would happen if the symbol of peace got snuffed out by villains? Now life is good at UAE but unfortunately all of a sudden the siren rings which is indicative of an intruder. Tenya however sees that it is just the press and warns everybody. Midoriya who was then elected as class president passes on the job of class president to Tenya since Tenya is big brain. All of the UA faculty realize however that it was not just the press that the barrier for UA had gone down and that somebody had in fact infiltrated the school. On Wednesday, Aizawa announces to the class that they will be participating in the trial of rescue which will take place at the USJ facility. After he's done giving a speech at the facility, Aizawa sees a black portal open up and dozens of villains come through it. After confirming that yes, shit has just gotten bad, he orders the students to group together. He then tells 13, another teacher there, to protect the students while gearing up for battle. Aizawa goes to town and starts manhandling these villains since he can literally erase quirks. Meanwhile, 13 is evacuating the class until Kurogiri, a high-ranking villain, stops them. Kurogiri reveals that they are the League of Villains, that their goal is to kill Mabua All Might. Kurogiri then uses his quirk to teleport the different students of Class 1A to the different places at the USJ. 
13 tells Tenya to dash over to UA and tell the teachers what's going on, and Kurugiri tries to stop him, but 13 blocks Kurugiri's path. Midoriya, Suyu, and Mineta then team up to manhandle some villains, you feel me? The three successfully escape from the villains in the flood zone, and Suyu wonders what their next course of action should be. Midoriya says that when they see an opening, they should jump in to help out Eraserhead. At the landslide zone, Shoto makes short ass work of the villains, and at the mountain zone, Denki, Momo, and Kyoko battle the villains there. They too make short work of their adversaries, and at the central plaza, Aizawa is still fighting the villains until he finally faces the ringleader, Tomura Shigaraki. Now, Tomura's got that infinity gauntlet type B. My boy touches shit and it disintegrates, so he touches Aizawa's arm, which starts disintegrating. While he manages to get away from Tomura and defeat two villains while at it, he is then approached by a monstrous villain from behind. Meanwhile, Kurogiri defeats 13 and attempts to pursue Tenya but is stopped by Mezo Shoji who jumps in to stop him. These three then go to the central plaza but are shocked to see that Aizawa is getting his ass beat. Tomura then asks the heroes to tell All Might that he is wanted by the artificial human Nomu, this monstrosity. Luckily, with some help from the other students who hold off Kurogiri, my boy Tenya makes it out of the area and into UA. That's all dandy, but back at the area, the central plaza, the severely beaten Aizawa tries to get up, but Nomu pins him right back down. Kurogiri then tells Tomura that one of these students escaped and Tomura realizes that the escaped student will most likely go and find dozens of pro heroes which they are not able to defeat at the current moment and decides to retreat. He decides to attack some of the students before leaving but luckily Aizawa uses all of his remaining strength to nullify Tomura's quirk before he can touch Suyu. Midoriya then throws a punch which is literally eaten by my boy Nomu. All Might and the pro heroes then appear and after getting help from Bakugo, from my boy Todoroki, All Might is able to blow Nomu away and that causes Tomoro to tear up since his literal main card is just blown out of the USJ. Like that shit went team rocketed to the moon. A few of the heroes have taken students hostage and at the same time Tomoro and Kurogiri have decided to attack All Might who's been severely weakened with his battle with the Nomu. Luckily the other pro heroes come with the strap and save All Might and gang. The villains make their grand escape and all is kinda mostly well. At the League of Villains hideout, a portal opens up with Tomura and Kurogiri exiting it. 13, I tried using Black Hole on the two, but Kurogiri wrapped himself around Tomura and teleported him. Or saved him, I don't remember the specifics of how that worked. On the blank monitor, a mysterious person appears and tells Tomura that he was not wrong and that he was simply over-optimistic after Tomura begins complaining about the Nomu being defeated. The mysterious person then says that they should handpick a new group and once again restart their plan and that Tomura is a symbol of importance and that next time he appears, they will show the world the horror of his existence. Back at the USJ, it is revealed that literally everybody except for Midoriya is uninjured. My boy getting injured left and right, goddamn. While some teachers are in critical condition, they will be alright. One of the policemen also say that they have apprehended a suspect 400 meters from the USJ and at the nurse's office, now Masa arrives and tells All Might that Shota, which is Aizawa, and 13 will also be alright. All Might says that without those teachers, the students would have been in danger and that at the same time, the students fought bravely and made the villains look like fools. The next day, Aizawa walks into class injured but alright and tells the students to not worry about him, that he's fine and that they should start getting worried about the battle that is approaching, the UA Sports Festival. And just like that, season 1 has completed. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, comment, maybe subscribe. Until next time in season 2. To the loo.